Hi everyone, good morning. We are gonna have a little bit of fun here in Photoshop today. I thought I'd share with you, um, you know, some tips and tricks and what to look for. No sound, uh, wondering if it's just me. So Garrett's gonna check that. If you can hear me, let me know in the comments, please. Um, and let me know where you're watching from. Hi, good morning. I'm just looking off to the side there because I can see your comments coming through. If you want me to know who you are, put your name as well because at the moment all I can see is Facebook user because of the program that we use to broadcast this. All right. Hello from New South Wales. Hi. Okay, I can hear you now. Fantastic. All right. So as I mentioned um, just a second ago, we're going to have a little fun here in Photoshop. I'm going to edit a digital background. I'm going to use um, you know, a previous baby that I photographed and use a digital backdrop and I'm going to composite those together and I thought that I'd share with you some tips and tricks on what to look for and how to you know, get the most out of your digital backgrounds when you are working with them. I know a lot of people use them and they're becoming more and more popular in everyone's day-to-day -day sort of, you know, uh, session workflow. And which is, um, which is fantastic really when you think about how you can get a lot of variation without having to do too much to the baby. And that's for me what it's all about, trying to get maximum results and keeping that baby as calm and as settled as possible for as long as possible. So often, you know, we, uh, oh, good morning from Dublin. Hi, in Canada. Adelaide, hi Vicky, hi Melissa from Canada, this is fantastic, and London, my god, it must be very, very late there, someone said you love my hair, it's so funny, we were just um, having a bit of a laugh about that because, you know, it, I'm not heading out to the hairdresser anytime soon, so it will start to grow rapidly and <laughs> change, Garrett's also in the same boat, so we're going to have a little fun and see what sort of new hairstyles we can come up with each week whilst it's growing and we're not getting uh, getting to the hairdresser being in, in lockdown. Alrighty, so let's get back to composites. I'm going to share with you, um, I just literally quickly typed this up and it's on the screen now and it's just what to look for when compositing with digital backgrounds. Um, I'll go through this list because, you know, it, it, is, it is such a great way to add variety to your galleries. Um, and at the moment, whilst you are in lockdown, using digital backgrounds to kind of reinvent some of your older photographs is a great way to share some new things on your page. You know, we've got to stay active um, on our social media pages. We've got to continually post and share every single day to keep that engagement going um, so that when we do come out of this, you know, you, you, your... Um, you know, your audience is going to, to still think that you are relevant because they're going to start seeing more and more of your work being shared every day. So that's why I wanted to do this with you. I created a very quick digital background yesterday off the painted, the hand painted canvas that you watched live, if, if you did watch that live, and with my favourite wooden bowl. So I'm going to show you um, how I use that to add a baby to it. So in terms of the list here, I'll just go through each one of these. We've got depth of field. Now this is going to be um, your aperture and, and how you actually um, you know, shoot the, the baby and then obviously the aperture with, with which the digital background was shot at. So I tend to shoot most of my digital backgrounds at around f4.5, f5. And that's purely because, you know, it's, you, you can soften um, a, a sharper photo with more um, detail. You can soften and blur things like that a lot easier as to um, you know shooting it at 2.8 and adding that extra depth of field. You can't do that. So that's why it's better to start with more and then sort of take it away. So you know having that detail to play with if you need to, and then obviously softening the areas that you um, are working with. But it's also really important when you are working with digitals. Um, you know, if if the baby is is nice and sharp, it's been shot at 2.8, so it's nice and sharp in the face, but then it starts to soften off on the edges. But if you're using a digital background that's really sharp, you've got to be consistent in terms of that depth of field and that focal plane um, to make sure that it all matches. So I'm going to talk about that as I edit as well. 
uh, the direction of light. So obviously looking at where the shadows fall within the digital backdrop and then obviously looking at where the shadows fall on the baby that you are compositing into the digital um, will help with the consistency and making it look as real as possible. And then we're going to talk about the intensity of light. And this is where, sorry, just swallowing, talking a lot. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, your voice is very therapeutic. I'm sure my husband and kids definitely don't feel the same way. <laughs> um, and intensity of light. So this is where you need to look at um, the type of lighting that the digital was shot with. Is it a soft light? Is it a, is it a contrasty light? And then obviously trying to match the lighting with the baby. So what I highly recommend when you're using digital backdrops is, you know, having your digitals, your favorite digitals, being able to show your clients those, and then photographing the baby um, with intention to use that particular digital file. So that way you can get the lighting nice and consistent, you can get that depth of field right, you can get the direction of light right. Um, and also that camera angle. So if you're working with a digital that's been shot from directly above, um, you want to make sure that when you are photographing a baby or you are compositing a baby into that digital that it's also been shot on that same perspective so it is from that exact same angle and it's the same when you are looking at backlit shots things like that have a look at the direction that you're shooting that baby with and try to find a digital or vice versa to get it on that exact same angle now that's probably a little bit more complex in getting it right um, but there is a lot to consider when you are compositing images to make them look real um, as though you know um, people won't be able to tell that it has been placed in there. Um, when we look at focal length, this is if you have um, purchased a digital background and it's been shot at a at a 70 mil focal length or a longer focal length and you're compositing in a baby that's been shot at say a 35 with a 35 mil lens there's going to be a slight difference there in terms of distortion um, so you really do need to be consistent as well with that focal length to make sure that you're getting it exactly right or if the digital has been shot with a wide angle and um, you know it, there is some distortion there you you know you can sort of um, notice things like that the other thing that I'm going to talk about here is colour balance. So in terms of your white balance, if you are putting a very cool toned baby into a very warm background, you're going to notice the difference or vice versa. So making sure that um, you are matching that colour balance and that tone throughout so it is consistent too. So warm baby, warm background, cool background, cooler baby um, will help get that matching uh, and, and help you, you know, make it look nice and um, even throughout the image. Uh, colour casts. So if a baby has been photographed on, you know, a different colour, there could be some potential colour casts on the skin of the baby when placing it into a digital background that is, you know, different in colour tone. So keeping that nice and consistent, you'll have to adjust, make some adjustments in terms of the skin tones. To, to make it look like it was actually shot on that particular color. The other thing is clarity. This means in terms of the effects that have been added in post-production. So whether or not you, the digital background has had um, any form of sort of, you know, textures or different matte looks or, you know, that filmy kind of um, grainy look, things like that, making sure that that's sort of um, continued and consistent through the way that the baby is edited to add to that digital background. Or if the baby has been edited previously in another photograph and you are now just sort of updating it, um, a tornado watch is in our area the perfect time. Oh, good Lord, please, <laughs> please stay safe. Um, you know, with everything else that's going on in the world and then having to deal with that, I'm sure that's going to be very, very stressful. So, yes, please stay safe. Um, that's very scary. Uh, coming back to the, the effects, you know, if a baby has been edited previously in another photograph and then you want to add it, uh, like now, if you want to create some new content for your Facebook page, just make sure that you are going to add those same effects to the background to make it consistent and, um, and look realistic. And then um, obviously noise levels. So if there's grain in the baby and you're adding it to a file that doesn't have grain, then you might need to add a little noise or vice versa. If there's noise in the background you might and none in the baby, then you might want to soften the noise that's in the background. Um, 
by reducing that. So yeah, there's a lot to kind of take into consideration here, but ultimately when you are, I'm going to have a sip of water. Have a sip of water. Because I'm, got... I'm talking a lot. We've got lots of people joining us. We've got 105 live. It's been holding steady. Um, I think Welcome, everyone's hi, everyone. all going to be loving this content because it's all the things that you consider every time you kind of yeah, go ab- do it. So absolutely. It's... And so my best advice when you're working with digital backgrounds is have the digitals that you've got in mind that you um, are going to use you know, throughout your sessions. Choose digital backgrounds that do match the style of, of how you currently shoot in terms of, you know, um, if you you know obviously shooting with more sort of earthy tones and things like that and then you know choosing digitals that are going to match that or if you're really bright and colorful then obviously there's lots of varieties out there and available for you but it does add variety to your galleries and they are lots of fun but when you are looking to create one you do have to make sure that the the consistency throughout all of these points that I've just mentioned is nice and even uh, to make it look as realistic as possible when you are compositing digitals. So there is a lot to consider, but I highly recommend that when you are photographing babies that you shoot with intention. You shoot to possibly, you know, be able to um, later on um, create a composite with that uh, to get the variety that you need which is always um, lots of fun, so yeah. And we've got Lizzie watching. Oh, you were going to be it. <laughs> <laughs> Bedtime in Scotland, yes, you can come back and watch this later on. Anytime. All right, so let's, let's go back over here. So I've got my, my wooden bowl. This is the backdrop that we photographed. And if I zoom in here, you can see that there is a lot of texture in the background. Now, when I'm shooting on my camera, um, which is the Canon 5DS, my raw files are quite large. They're actually larger than a file that comes out of the 5D Mark IV. So, you know, when, when you are creating your own digital files and things like that, and when you're compositing, I know if I try to put an image that in like a baby that I've shot previously on a different camera, if it's been cropped or something like that, the baby could potentially be quite small within size inside this particular um, digital. So there's a lot to consider there. You may need to adjust the size of your background to make it work with the baby that you are compositing in there, depending on you know the, the, the file size of that particular baby. So I'll, I'll show you an, an older photo that I've taken, which we're gonna composite into this. I was gonna use a fake baby, but I thought, no, that's no fun. Um, the other thing is you can see all of that detail like I said but I know that looking at that beautiful texture in the background I am going to have to soften that to make that depth of field more realistic and consistent throughout the entire image so we'll have a look at that as we place our baby in there you can also see that um, there is a little bit of texture over here there's sharpness in the wool um, as it was photographed. You know, I focused down here in the center of the bowl. So it is going to be easier for me to soften all of that detail as opposed to, you know, add sharpness um, later on, which is why I've shot this at, at F4, I'm sorry, F5. We've got a few people here saying that there's um, a few errors within Facebook. Um, I'm broadcasting it here um, straight to my phone and it's coming through okay. I would say Facebook might be having some issues, but we will have the broadcast um, saved if anyone loses anything. Absolutely. Um, and do you know what? Right now, um, Facebook is actually, it has the most users that it's ever, ever had at one time happening right now all over the world. And that is because of the lockdowns that are happening. You know, it's a way for people to stay in touch and, and communicate online as opposed to, you know, any other way. So whilst people are at home in, in lockdown, they are on Facebook and that's why it is having a few problems at the moment because right now is it experiencing more users than it ever has previously done before. So if you are having any issues, the video will stay here. It is being recorded and the, the, re, like the, the replay of it won't have any problems problems hopefully for you later on so yes don't stress too much if, if it does cut out on you I know how frustrating that can be alrighty so yeah I've got my beautiful warm tones um, now I did photograph this and I chose to photograph the wool on the inside a little lighter in tone because it is easier to darken 
um, tones like that in post-production than it is to lighten them. So if I had used a darker wool to match um, the background that a baby has been photo photographed on to, to composite with, it is easier to darken that than it is to lighten it. So um, that's why I've got a lighter tone in there, plus it sort of gives me a little bit of room to play. So it's all about versatility. Um, let's go to the photograph that I have chosen here. So again, really basic, very, very simple photograph shot on my posing bag. So if you're using different things like, you know, little posies to photograph babies on, um, this is probably going to be, you know, very, very similar in that respect. But you can see there's a nice warm peachy tone to this. Uh, it is nice and soft around the edges, so it's been previously edited, so some of those points that we were talking about before are what I'm going to have to consider when I am compositing this baby into my, my digital. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the entire image, Command A and Command C. Now I do know that this is going to be a smaller file. You can see that it's been cropped to that 8 by 10 ratio as well as it's been previously edited. All right, so having a little look here. And this is where, you know, my background, if I just reduce the opacity here and I have a look, that baby's gonna look really small inside this frame. So this is something that, again, we have to consider when we are purchasing digitals, we're downloading them. So to get that size right, I'm not gonna stretch the baby. If I start stretching the baby, I'm actually going to lose focus um, and, and sharpness and detail in the baby. I'm going to be stretching that file larger than what it's actually capable of going. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to put that into the trash. I just wanted to show you that. And what I'm going to do is just resize my background um, and make it a little smaller here. I don't want to make it too small, obviously, but I do need to make it just that little bit smaller to, to be able to make it the perfect size for that baby. So I'm just gonna come up here to image size and we can have a look. Now it is a very, very large file. Um, I can reduce that and I'm probably just gonna reduce it down to, I reckon, uh, I reckon about, we'll, we'll have a look at, I don't wanna to take too much away, so you may have to do this a couple of times, but we'll just take it down to 8,000. And, and it's made it a little bit smaller so we can go a little bit, knowing that I had the baby in there before. Let's come down to, let's go to about seven. Let's go seven and a half. All right, still going to be a nice big file. So now when I bring my baby in, it should fit a little better. And we reduce the opacity and having a look at the size there. You could, you could continue to go down if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. Or another quick way to do it, just having a look at the position of the baby there, is to click on that background layer, make a copy layer, Command J, Command T, and this is where you could just make that prop a little smaller here and fit it in better that way. So that way the baby is um, realistically a better size for this, uh, this size of prop and, um, and so forth. Alrighty, so now that we've got the right size, I can come in and crop this image later on, um, which is going to be fine. And I mean, if you wanted to do it now, what I am going to do is go to my 4x6 ratio here and just crop it in to where, where I was. There's quite a few different ways of doing things. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got our baby um, to be the correct size, the next thing I need to look at is the direction of light. So you can see that the light is coming in here from the right hand side on the baby, but on the, on the prop, it's actually coming in from the left hand side. So we need to adjust one or the other, the baby or the background. And, you know, depending on how you prefer to look at, I suppose, a baby in terms of the way that it, it curls through the frame from left to right is entirely up to you. Um, if I put that into transform and I command T and I right click on the baby and I flip it horizontally, do you know, is that the way that the baby is positioned there now sitting, does it look comfortable? Um, does it look right? Ah, thank you, someone likes my green top. 
Okay, let's, um, I'm getting distracted there with comments. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not overly keen on having the baby face the other way. When I flipped it, it just didn't sit right. It didn't feel right, very personal. So I'm gonna come back to my background copy layer here and I'm gonna take that into transform, Command T, and I'm gonna flip that. And now I'm gonna get that light coming in from the exact same direction as the baby, which is what we're aiming to achieve here. Um, and what I can do is just hold the Command key in and select the background and I can flatten those um, and merge them, Command E. Alrighty, so, Again, let's come up here and have a look at a few things before we start compositing this because we've got a lot of detail in the background with the way that it was shot in terms of its aperture, its depth of field, and then we've got a lot of softness around this baby. So there's also, um, so we're going to have to match that. There's also a difference in colour tone, we're going to have to match that. And, um, and yeah, we're, I'm, I'm happy with the intensity, obviously, and the direction of that light. It's nice and soft. It's going to match the background. And we'll have a look at any sort of particular colour cast. There's a few little pink tones coming off that peach-coloured um, uh, wool that the baby's on there. So let's go ahead and reduce the opacity here of our little baby. If you guys have got any questions as well, please pop them into the comments. So at about 50%, and what I'm going to do here is um, add a layer mask, and I'm going to use a black brush, and I'm just going to come around the edge of the bowl just to remove the majority of excess information there that we don't need. Just doing this very, very quickly. So when I am editing all of my work, it, it is done using layers and masks. I do use a lot of actions, which we'll have some fun playing with shortly. I've seen quite a few people with my new colour change action and having fun and, and sharing their results of that in the group. It's been fantastic. It is a lot of fun and it's a great way, like I said before, to continually create something new to share on your page. So if you've got some backgrounds there that you can adjust in terms of colour, get sharing, get posting on Facebook, on Instagram to, to make sure that those algorithms are seeing that you are being active. Um, there is a question there about the um, wool that you used in the. Oh, and this, I suppose in the in the. It's the same wool actually in both the the background and the the baby. The baby. It's the same type of wool, and oh. it's just wool batting. Uh, I will try and find actually the place that I purchased that from. It's it's from a place in Adelaide, and it's an actual wool shop. So it's not sadly from a prop vendor. You can get things like this from prop vendors, but I went directly to um, a, a wool supplier, and I found it there. And they had some really really beautiful um, colours, natural tones, and and so on. Amy's just asked if this will be available to watch later. I think we're going to make this available. What do you reckon, Garrett? All right then. He's in charge here <laughs> behind the. I will camera. add this um, because it's going to be quite a good demonstration. I will add this to the um, digital that we just put in the store last night. So, this actual digital that Kelly's using right now, you can actually purchase it and it's on sale. Um, but I'll add this as a tutorial to that. I think it'll be quite um, quite productive. Yeah, it'll be good yeah. for people to, to have a play with. So you can see now, I've brought the opacity of the baby there up to 100%. So now you can, having a look at the, the prop, the, the, um, the background over here, you can see that there's still a lot of work to be done. And that's why understanding all of these different points are gonna make it so much easier for you to make your, your digitals look as realistic as you possibly can. And that's why, obviously, I mean, I love Photoshop because the, the possibilities really are endless. You can have a lot of fun. Um, Roxanne's just heard that you've got a colour change action. Where can I find that? <laughs> um, you can go to newbornposing.com. It's in the editing section of the store. Alrighty, so I've just taken that off where I don't need that excess information. Um, so what I'm going to try to do here now is sort of blend a little bit um, the, the background in with the foreground and I'm going to change the opacity of my brush here 
And I'm doing this quite slowly, sort of step by step so you guys can follow along. And I've still got it on black. And if I right click, I can see that my, the hardness of my brush is very, very soft. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of come around the edge here, make my brush a little bigger, and just take it off at about 50% to help blend that through. So we've already got the shadows around the baby that we want, which is perfect. Alrighty, so now let's jump back to our background layer. I can see the detail there underneath and now I can start to add the softness to the background. Um, and. I can see that that's Michelle in there commenting. <laughs> yeah, she's just posted a link there for the, the Wacom graphics tablet. Oh yeah, somebody God. asked if you used a, uh, a tablet. Oh, this is a game changer. Um, absolute game changer. I am borrowing yours today, Michelle. I'm sorry. You're <laughs> 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 because um, I scratched mine and uh, I need to get a new one. Alrighty, so yeah, just coming around and, and removing a little bit more there. So now I can see the sharpness in the wool underneath and I need to match that a little better with the, um, the baby in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is click on that background layer, Command J, create a copy layer of that. And I'm going to come up here to filter and come down to blur and Gaussian blur. Now again, you know, there's going to be lots of different ways for you to do and edit your digital backgrounds. You've probably got your own system and way of doing it. So I thought I'd just share some of the things that I do when I am compositing and using stuff like this. I want to get that, that blur, that softness to match as much as I possibly can. Um, so I'm probably going to come up to about five pixels in radius there, I reckon. Maybe a little less, it looks a little bit too soft now. There we go. And I'm being very particular. <laughs> All right, and again, adding a layer mask. Let me just hide that bottom bar there. There we go, so you can see what's going on. And um, I'm gonna invert. Well, I mean, I could leave it entirely on the baby here and use a black brush to take it off the prop. So looking at that focal plane, and that means that um, I'm going to turn side on just to show you here exactly what I'm sort of talking about. But if the camera was in front of me and taking a photo of my face and it was shot at 2.8, which the baby was photographed at. So it's not going to have a very, um, you know, a big focal plane in terms of where it's focusing. So if it's focusing on my eye, then my eye should be in focus. But at 2.8, it's my ears aren't going to be in focus. So in terms of that focal plane, it's going to be very, very narrow. So at the moment, um, I'm looking at anything that is potentially going to be, so if this is the baby's face, anything that is potentially going to be at the same height as the baby's face should necessarily, in terms of where this is shot from, from above, so if it's shot from above and the baby's here and the bowl is here, the edge of the bowl should still be in focus. But if the bowl was back here, then it should be softer because it's going to fall off that focal plane, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I think so. Does that make sense to you, Garrett? Yes. <laughs> um, and Michelle says, you're allowed to borrow your own property, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Um, somebody said here, um, who have we got? Anna, I see that you make more changes to the prop to match the baby. Do you use this method for all your composites so you don't miss Good question. baby's image quality? The, yeah. the thing, the, the reason that I'm adjusting the background more so than the baby is because the baby has been edited. If you have photographed a baby uh, during a session with the intention to add it to a digital background, then you would probably edit the baby to match the digital background because it would have had some form of retouching already done. Unless, of course, you're going for a completely different look and an idea, and that's the thing. With digitals, you can change the color, you can change the crop, you can add um, you know, one digital background to another digital background to really get creative. So obviously the, the possibilities are endless, but if the baby has already been edited and you're just revamping some old photos because you want something new to share, then this is the way that you would do it. But if you have got a digital 
and then you photograph a baby specifically for that digital, then you would put the unedited baby into that digital and retouch it to match the background, if that makes sense. Cool. Alrighty. So I'm just going to come around and I'm going to bring back, I've taken this to 100% and I've got my brush at the same sort of opacity here. I'm going to take it off at 100 but then I may just kind of soften it a little more and bring the opacity back. But it's all about just getting it as consistent as you possibly can. And I'm just kind of demonstrating what sort of things to look for because I know that there's a lot of members in the group here that love using digital backgrounds and, um, and even making your own because if you can get through your entire newborn session on your posing bag um, or whatever it is that you're using to photograph your baby on, then if you've got props like this or like yesterday when I, when I did my little setup and I was using some flowers, things like that that take a long time, if you want to create some beautiful elaborate setups, create a gallery of digitals with your own props, with your own um, items and, and you know styling sort of um, techniques that are unique to your brand that's going to help you stand out create a gallery so that your clients can go through and choose them and then you can get through that shoot so fast on the posing bag or whatever it is that you're using to um, get your clients in and out as quickly as possible and get maximum results without having to do too much. Um, and again, if anyone's having any issues with the um, streaming today, um, Facebook is pretty overloaded at the moment so this will be back into the group in all its glory and you'll just be able to watch it from start to finish without any interruptions if it is too difficult for you to watch it live. All right, so I've just turned my little guide on there and that's just the backslash key that is below the delete key and above the return key. I've just popped that on just to see where I've kind of missed here, whether I've gone outside my lines. My colouring in skills aren't, aren't fab. But yeah, I'm just going to come around so that it is nice and consistent. And this is the thing, you know, when you go to print your photographs, you, you will notice these things. So it is always best to zoom in and have a look at where you are missing. Because um, if I turn that on and, you know, if I come out, you can see how blurry it is and how sharp it is there. So now I've got to make that a little bit more consistent here. Um, I do want the background it's going to be further away than the, infant, than the, the I suppose, the textures inside the bowl. But if you have a look here, if you zoom in, where I've kind of gone outside there, the line, it's, it's travelled over into that canvas background. So being nice and consistent there, oops. Because if I print that, I will see it. And you know what, I am a perfectionist, but I also, you know, I'm very, very focused on being able to create products and services that my clients can't create themselves. And this is why they keep coming back and we've got to give them a reason to keep coming back and hiring us. I think that is a really important key as a photographer. I mean, because let's face it, everybody has a camera in their hands today. So if we get lazy, then it will show in our work You can mask this off if you want to, but the tones were very similar, so it's just easy to come around with a brush and be nice and consistent there. How are we going? We've got a few people watching. We do. It is dropping off a bit. There are a few interruptions with the um, connection well. today. And it's broadcasting fine here. We actually have cable internet into the studio, so um, our internet, which is why we keep coming back here and not working from home. <laughs> Because our home Wi-Fi is not great. So yeah, I would come around, do the outside here before I start working on the inside, just to make sure it is nice and consistent. Okay, so we're starting to kind of see, you know, that, that um, consistency there. You can see in the background, 
where it was really sharp and now I've just softened it off there. And now as I come in towards the center of the bowl there, you know, I may not want the edge of the bowl to be as sharp as what it currently is. So if I bring the opacity of my brush down to a say 15%, um, I could potentially paint just back over there just to soften it off a little bit so it's not too sharp. I'm just going all the way around there you can see um, see that so now what I'm going to do is use the black brush and I'm going to come around the inside here and I'm just going to bring back a little bit of that detail so I always start with a lower opacity because it's easy to build off that um, as I'm as I'm brushing so just taking that off just a little bit more around the edge there it's not too soft. Alrighty. So, having a look here, if I bring the opacity of my brush up to 100 and I take that off, you can still see that it is, um, you know, quite sharp there underneath. I do want to keep that beautiful softness underneath the baby. Um, and but what I need to do now is get the uh, the colours to match in terms of that consistency. Um, if I go ahead now and I add, I mean, I don't need to keep that blur layer open. I don't think I need to come around there anymore. I probably could come around just a little bit more there on the inside. So I'm just hitting the X key there. And bring back a little bit of detail so it doesn't look so sharp and then so blurry just around the inside. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and flatten those two because I've now got that softness exactly where I want it. The next thing that I kind of want to do is um, match obviously that background. I could do the peachy sort of tones that are in this particular baby. I could make, make those the same sort of brown tones that are in the background or vice versa, I could make the background and the, and the wool under the baby the same sort of peachy tones as the baby. But I think what I, I prefer here are those, um, you know, those sort of browner, more browner, earthy tones than that peach to go with this particular setup because I want to keep that, you know, that bowl looking as, as natural as I possibly can. All right, so there's a couple of different ways that I can do this. First, before I start adjusting any tone, I just need to make sure that I've got that baby exactly where I want it. Um, do I need to move it over? Select the layer, Kelly. Um, do I need to move it over just a little bit more there? Is the head in the right position? I'm pretty happy with that and that round sort of shape continues with that round shape of the actual bowl and it's nice and centered exactly where I want it to be. And then when I start to have a look here at everything else, the shadows all look all look nice. I could potentially darken them down just a little bit but I'll, I'll do that after I flatten it. Okay, so I'm just going to take a snapshot. I always take snapshots throughout my editing process when I'm doing things like that because if I need to come back at any point in time I can. Um, in terms of my history and yeah but I don't need to, to obviously keep the layer mask anymore so I'm going to right click on that and I'm just going to apply a layer mask so now that's exactly what we've got um, on on top of this particular digital background I'm going to sample the, the tones that are in the background here um, and I'm going to come to my paintbrush I'm just going to click here in the background and sample that now what I can do is I can change the, the mode, the brush mode to color and paint that on. I can use my new color change action. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this to get it to match and become nice and consistent. If I come in, if I turn that layer off, if I come in and I, I select and grab the color here, that's gonna help me change it to match the felt, the wool that's in here, 
or I could potentially darken this wall down. So it is entirely up to you on what your personal preference is. And like I keep saying, the possibilities are always endless when it comes to, to working with digitals like this, to make them your own and make them unique. So don't ever think that you've got to keep it exactly the way that it is. Have a little bit of fun and get creative. Uh, yeah, so I've selected that color tone in the background there. I'm gonna bring my, my brush mode down to color and I've got it at Keep it quite low here at about 15%. I'm going to create a copy layer of the baby, so Command J. So now I'm going to be working, um, you know, on on the baby that's on top, and I've got that original underneath. So I'm just going to come around the outside there, and you can see just at 15% that difference that's already made um, made there. So I'm going to come around a bit more, come in a little close to the baby and work with that wall. Got any more questions? Um, what are taking off right most the blue? I'm not sure exactly what that means. Are you taking off the blur right now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm adjusting the colour tone of the wrap that's around the baby to match the wool that's underneath. So now I'm working in the, working on, you know, that overall colour balance. To make that nice and consistent and even. Yeah, if anyone is continuing to have issues with the broadcast, we do apologise. Um, Facebook, I'm sure, are trying to um, get, their, get their speeds up to what they can. Um, but definitely do come back if, if it is too choppy for you in your areas. That's a shame. We've been having a really great run with all of our lives. We have. So yeah, I'm just making sure that's nice and consistent. So you can see, um, you know, the original sort of color tone there and then underneath. So now what I'm gonna do is I could remove this layer here that's underneath. Um, it's obviously just there as a bit of a backup for me. So I've got that copy layer, it's exactly where I want it. And now I can turn that little layer there off. I'm gonna add a mask now. Um, to the, the baby. I've got the, the colour tone of the material right. Um, so I'm working with one element at a time. I'm not going to then come in on the same layer and adjust the skin. We'll do that on a separate layer um, and so forth. So where I'm, I'm sort of working now is just to get that the, the connection between the baby and the background to gel and match as much as I possibly can. So I'm still in my brush mode. Obviously, um, you know, adding a layer mask, it's come back to normal, but always do check the mode of your brush and obviously whether you are on a black or a white brush to make sure that that's all working for you. So let's bring the opacity there of that brush up a little bit more. So I've got a black brush on a white mask and now I can just kind of come around and take that off and we're starting to get that baby a little bit more connected here to the background. So just looking at it, I can see that I do need to add a little bit of darkness to the wall that's underneath because it is brighter than the wall that's on the baby. I'm just revealing a bit more of that texture and detail underneath, not coming in too close to the, to the edges there and keeping that sharpness nice and consistent. Alrighty, so now this is where I'm going to come back to my background layer. I could remove this layer if I want to, but we'll just leave it there. Um, and I'm going to create another copy layer of my background. Um, this is where I do want to darken the wrap. So what I could potentially do is change now my brush mode from color to multiply, or I could just multiply the layer and add a mask and paint that on. So let me just have a quick drink of water here. Lovely. I just did a little bit of research via Google, and yes. Facebook is having major issues today. Oh. <laughs> what a shame. That's okay. Okay, so the few different ways that obviously you can do this. You could do it in curves, you could do it in levels, um, you can do brush mode. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to do this using curves. 
I'm going to come up into curves. You could have done this using an adjustment layer. Like I said, many, many ways to do it. Click on my little hand here and you can see where that information is kind of sitting there and I'm just going to reduce that so it's a little darker. You can see it adjusting the background there. I'm not looking at the background, I'm just looking at that wool. I'm going to go OK and then I'm going to add a layer mask and invert that and then paint that on to darken it. Paint that on to where you get where you want to get it to that right level. So I'm just coming around the outside of the baby there and then focusing on the edge of that wool and that wrap. All right, we're nearly finished. So you can see just by darkening that down there. And again, you can um, adjust the, the colors, the tones, all of that to match. It's entirely up to you. I've just brought down um, that range, that tonal range to kind of help match it with the wool that's now on the baby. And again, we're gonna come back and look at those different tones in a second. Okay, I'm happy with that. And Talking about tones and colors, will you be showing the color change action, maybe how to change of background or Yeah, we can something. play with that in a second. Good Let's get word. this to match as much as we possibly can. So just coming around the outside of the baby. Alrighty. Perfect. So let's go ahead and flatten those. That's where I want it. Um, I'm going to use the, the colour change action, I think, um, on the background and everything to, to fix that so I'm happy now with you know how I've connected the the baby here I will just add a little bit more darkness around the edge there so that it does look like that shadowing is nice and consistent with the edge inside the bowl and then we'll um, work on the baby skin and then we'll use the color change action what do you reckon nice yeah okay <laughs> so I'll get rid of that now and again um, you can continue to add you know, the, the curves, that levels. So we can see underneath there with the, the baby where the felt is that it's quite light in terms of tone. And then obviously I could remove the excess fabric here, but I like the softness that it adds because it stays, it means that it's nice and consistent in terms of that depth of field with the way that the baby was photographed. So I wanna keep that softness over the top there. Um, and then what I want to do is just sort of darken it down But now I'm at a point where I can actually merge these two layers and now start working on this as if it was its own particular image You could continue to add adjustment layers and you know, we could do that here. We could come down oops, And come up into we could go into curves again And what I'm going to do is just darken that down Close that, invert that, and now paint that on with a nice soft brush. Bring the opacity down around the baby. Shadows are what give an image depth and dimension, so you want to making up words today. That was a good one. I liked that. You like that one? That's good. And you want to make sure that it's nice and consistent with, obviously, the prop and the light that's coming across that digital background. Okay, so as that light's sort of coming in from the side, you can see I've just added that little bit of depth there around the baby to sort of connect it just that little bit more in terms of shadow. I'll we'll just darken this down just here, that light bit, and a few of these lighter tones over here. You could use a 50% grey layer if you wanted to darken the areas down. You could again use curves, levels, 
lots of different ways to achieve the same results. You just want to make sure that you're doing it in a very non-destructive way. Adjustment layers are fantastic. All right, so now my shadows up here are a bit more consistent, you know, down here looking at the shadows of the bowl. So in terms of the intensity of that light, you can adjust the, the opacity of your layer to, to get it to really match. So what I'm looking at is not just one area, I'm looking at the background as well to make it, um, you know, nice and consistent and as realistic as possible. Alrighty, so I do want to work here on the baby's skin and it is quite pink in comparison to the background. So we can create another adjustment layer here and we can come down to color balance. We can also, you know, remove some of those reds using hue and saturation. Um, so looking at the baby, we can see that there's quite a few kind of ready pink tones down here on the side in the joint areas where those shadows are. So if we remove some of those red tones and I can use actions obviously to do this but I'll just do it very very quickly make it a bit more um, specific here you can lighten some of those red tones increase the hue invert that and that's how I usually do this and then obviously just painting it onto some of those areas that are nice and pink. Matched the other image perfectly and we do like babies to be nice and pink, they should be, but uh, we want to make this nice and this baby nice and warm to be consistent with the background. You can see adding a mask allows you to be you know uh, more selective with where you paint your layers on you don't want to be making global adjustments. You want to work with each area individually to get it to, to look exactly the way you want it to. So you can see just by removing those red tones, if we come back, we can add now a color balance adjustment layer. And we can increase those sort of yellowy tones there. Invert that and then paint that on. Now we can start to warm this little one up to match. So it's almost like fixing the reds, it kind of gave it a bit of a, would you say like a grey sort of look and now you're kind of putting back in the, the warmth yeah, so I just parts? removed kind of... those pinky reds yeah. or lightened the pinky reds and now I'm just kind of um, adding in a little bit of warmth into those areas to, so it matches the background. That's cool. Alright, so that looks much better. Alrighty, so now I'm kind of ready to sort of you know, just sort of tidy it up a little bit. If I was to leave this exactly the way that it was, and you know, let's go ahead and have a look, take a snapshot and have a look back at our original snapshot, and there's where we put the baby in, and then we can come back and we're starting to see how it's sort of connecting here and, um, you know, starting to look more realistic. The, the other thing is, um, you know, when I am sort of starting to look at how, you know, to, to look at the, I suppose, the um, focal plane and things like that, um, you know, if you still haven't got it right, you can come back in and soften it down more. You could soften the background, you could add more texture to the background, lots of things like that. You can have so much fun. So let's go ahead and we'll just flatten all of that and now we can start to really play. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, there we go. My eyesight is really playing up at the moment. What is it doing? Oh, uh, did you do the tutorial one? I did, yeah, I'm sorry, I clicked so on the So the colour change action has um, two parts to it. Mm -hmm. It has a step-by-step -step tutorial, yes. um, which is all those pop-ups, and then um, one that doesn't do all of those pop-ups, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Easy to make And I just clicked on the wrong one. I don't <laughs> have my glasses on. When I am connected to different devices with my computer, it makes everything appear a lot smaller on my screen. Crazy, right? 
Okay, so um, it's picked obviously this lovely pinky tone and this is where um, you can then select the colour obviously that you want to use. So let's have a look. We've got our beautiful background colour. We can come in and we can select you know, um, any particular colour that we want. If we want to adjust the, the baby and then match more of these sort of brownie tones, uh, we can do that or we can get really creative here and start to play with um, different tones. So double clicking on that, you know, we can come, come down into these blue grey tones, obviously taking it off the baby and the wool and you've got a lightened layer and a darkened layer and this is where you can obviously select the colour and then mask it off where you don't want it to be and then you can lighten it and darken it as well. So you can have lots and lots of fun. I'm going to be extremely boring here. <laughs> you won't go for greyish by any chance, will you, Kelly Brown? No. It's no, your favourite colour. No. So yeah, I, um, I'm going to choose the... Um, and the background colour. Yep, greyish. Because <laughs> yep. I love it. And then I could have a little bit of fun here, obviously, you know, playing around with the different tones there within that sort of range. Uh, lighter, darker, flatter. It's entirely up to you. Alrighty, so this is where um, I can then either invert that layer or, um, you know, uh, mask it off the areas that I don't want it to affect. So I'm probably just going to invert it and paint it on. And this is what's so wonderful about, you know, playing in Photoshop with actions and things like this is that the, the potential, you know, and the ability to create something um, very, very different is very high. The, the way that you can kind of paint things on and, and have fun Come that around because it's going to be very hard to blend into the wall. Uh, you know, you can do so much. And if we just click on that backslash key, I can see where I've missed, where I've gone over the lines. We got any questions? How are people going with that broadcast? Is it still um, playing up? Yeah, Facebook is failed today. Um, so we will make sure that this broadcast is back into the group so everyone can watch it in its entire, entirety. no fun thanks Facebook we do have someone here that said um, thanks for all the time you've self selflessly gosh that's a hard word to, to look at and say <laughs> um, invested into other photographers these last few days you continue to bless us all oh you're welcome thank you I appreciate that it's um, you know it's it's a tough time at the moment for everyone and I think we just need to, to stick with each other and, and work through this. So yeah, I can bring the opacity of that down to wherever you want it and then if you want to darken it, obviously. You can play with that as well. Oh, I need to invert that and paint it on and it's at 1%. So we'll bring it up to, let's take it up to 100%. And I'm painting that on at 19%. But yeah, you can have a lot of fun with that. It can be quick. Um, mm. Or you can have, you know, take your time and be patient. It's amazing how adding that little bit of um, darkness around it's really made that baby pop. Yeah. And it's things like that, I suppose, that you can play with to to change the image right up. Wow. Yeah, and then you can obviously, again, change the opacity of that and take it off and make it as custom as, as you really do want. The other thing with the background is, um, you know, you can have a heap of fun in the background. You can darken that down. I'm going to add a tick. I'm gonna, just going to darken it down just a little bit here. Just go over it once at 19%. And then I'm going to grab a texture. And, and play with that. Have we got any more questions while I'm playing with some textures here? Nothing coming through just I yet. I will um, let you file through your files there for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I 
we're um, almost done here, guys. But no, this is this has been really great to to see the process, and I suppose the thought pattern and the different things that you've got to think about. So right at the very beginning, when you went through that list, I think what a lot of people were seeing was it's not as simple as just you know buy a digital background or make a digital background and then plonk a baby in it. You know there are some things to consider there and. Um, to make, to make sure it's realistic and you're blending it well. So Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, and I've done this very quickly, and and, um, and just to show you. So, so just there you opened that file. Yeah, yeah, so I basically just went into my files. I've got a little hard drive here and found all my textures, and I've gone with my painterly textures. This is number seven. This is one of my absolute favorites. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add this to the background of, of my image. So Command A. Command to C to copy it, um, you know, and if I've got that exactly where I want it, let's just say that I'm completely happy with that, let's close that, we could have left it open but we'll let close it. Um, I can paste that texture over the top, you can obviously make it as big or as small as you want. Now there is going to be detail in this so it will need softening uh, when you are playing with, with textures. But what I love about these is they do really create that little bit of extra something special for your files. So down here on my layer modes, this is where you can go through and have a look at the different effects that you can add to your, your image. So even on Lighten, I mean, look at that. You can have a lot of fun, um, you know, with the opacity and then masking it off, overlay. Obviously, these ones down here are gonna add more contrast with that layer. Um, soft light's probably one of my go-tos. Multiply is gonna be a little dark but if you added multiply and then you brought back the opacity, you know, you could really create something nice and dark and moody. So changing the different um, layer modes here is what's gonna be nice and fun for you. And what you can also do is, that's put at soft light and that's at 100%. I can then go into hue and saturation and I can actually bring back the saturation of that if I don't want it to be as warm and as intense. So when you are using those contrast modes, um, it will sort of, you know, increase the saturation there as well for you. But yeah, be, be careful with that. It's your mother. Oh, hello <laughs> mum. Hi. Alrighty, so just bringing back that saturation just a little bit. Now, if you want to keep that contrast over the baby to you can see that it's just adding that little bit of contrast, but you don't want the texture there. What I would do is use my lasso tool and just come around the wool and the baby here. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to feather it by about 55 pixels. And then I'm going to come up to Gaussian Blur and I'm going to blur that selection. And that will take the texture away, but leave the contrast of what it's added to the photograph. So if I zoom in now, we have a little look here. I can go before, so there's that texture from that layer, and then by blurring it, I'm taking it off. But you'll see if I take that layer away, it's just added that little bit of warm contrast, which is what's gonna give that the pop that, it, that I want it to have. So, um, looking at this, I just need to blur now the, the texture in the background a little bit to make that depth of field nice and consistent. So you can obviously see that there's lots of texture there in the background um, and it, it's quite blurry here. So it's not consistent in terms of that depth of field, which is what we talked about before. Again, another made up word. <laughs> and I don't want to blur it obviously by a thousand pixels because you'll see you know, it's just going to turn it into nothing. So we'll just bring that back and we'll start to have a look here, zoom in at that texture. We don't want to take away too much because we want all that beautiful detail. Maybe at about there, I think. zoom and I can show you that texture here we've got uh, sorry come back here to here and it just softens it but still keeps that beautiful effect on the background so yeah I'm pretty happy with that let's take another snapshot and let's come back up here to our first snapshot so we've got our before 
and our after, and we've created something completely unique, something to add to Facebook, um, you know, refresh and, and get people excited about getting ready to book new sessions with you. Now, I know a lot of you, being newborn photographers, will um, not be able to do your client's newborn sessions, so they will be coming back, obviously, hopefully rebooking with you. You've got to keep those lines of communication open to get them back in your studio. Uh, you want to make sure that, um, you know, when they do come back, you're photographing that baby at the ideal time. You know, that sitter session is going to be a great place to start and getting them, giving them some, a set oh God, I can't talk today. Anyone would <laughs> think it was Friday. <laughs> giving them some incentive to come back for those sitter sessions um, you know, would be such a great way to, to create some beautiful photos for them. They're going to be ready for that at the end of this because it is going to be very tough times and, um, you know, we, we will struggle but we will get through it, I promise you. So I want you to have a great day um, and I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do some, some more sort of fun things. What did we put on our board that we're going to do tomorrow? Oh, we we did. We wrote it on the on the whiteboard upstairs, and yeah. it's sitting right behind me at my desk. But <laughs> I can't for the life of me remember. All right. Well, I'll post it anyway into <laughs> the um, into the group a little later on. I'm going to go do some work. I've got some emails to catch up on. Some more editing. But this was fun, and um, I hope you guys enjoy playing with your digitals. Get creative, and uh, yeah, share what you create. I look forward to it. Take care. Bye.